Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how we can create gradient text inside of GIMP. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to go over to the text tool in the top left hand corner. You can hit T on your keyboard to select that as well. Then choose an area where we'd like to start adding some basic one color text on. So I'm going to use this foreground color white to start typing the text. Doesn't really matter because we're going to fill it with the gradient later anyway. But I'll left click here. Um, you can choose whichever fonts you want over here. And I'll just start typing. So let's just do gradient text. I'll also select all of this text with control A. And you'll notice a box appears around each character. And then let's scale this size up to 300, maybe even 400. Why not? We have the room for it. And then I'll click over here on the move tool to kind of recenter this in our image. If we want to make sure it's perfectly centered, we can always go up to image guides, new guide by percent, and then change direction to vertical 50% to make it the middle of the screen. And now if we move this uh, text, we can snap it right to the middle of the screen and, and having it there like that is going to make it look a little bit better. Okay, so now we have our basic text to change it to a gradient, what we've got to do is right click on the text layer. So that's over here in the bottom right hand corner, the layers box, I'm right clicking on gradient text. And then I'm going to do alpha to selection. So now that we have this selection made, if we apply a gradient to our screen on this layer, it's going to fill in all of these spaces with the gradient. Now you might want to put this on a different layer. If that's the case, then you can just click down here and create a new layer. And I'll just call this gradient here. That way we don't actually overwrite the text. We're only filling the space where that text is sitting on right now. So now we can go to the area where the fill bucket tool is. We can right click and select gradient. Alternatively, just hit G on your keyboard. And now we can either select one of the default gradients by clicking here and finding them. You can see there's many different options we have available. Or if you just want to go between two colors, which is probably the more standard way of doing things, then find one of the foreground to backgrounds where it has like a smooth transition, not the hard edge, as you see right here, where it's white and then black, but it somehow has to transition into that. So I'll choose foreground to background uh, RGB. That means red, green, blue. And now we need to pick the colors for our gradient. FG means foreground, BG means background. So this means foreground color to background color. So up here in the color selectors, I'll choose our first color. So just think about what would go good with your background. Maybe I'll try some kind of light blue. So we'll choose that as our first color. I'll hit X and now I'll click on the background color, which is currently black. And we'll change that to something else. Uh, maybe we'll go kind of with an aquamarine green kind of color. So I'll hit OK there. And now to kind of see how your gradient is roughly going to look, you can just kind of look at the preview image. You'll notice that with the colors changing for your foreground background that this updates here. Now you need to decide on the gradient shape. So you can choose linear, which means it's going to start in one color. You aim it at a direction and then wherever that direction ends up is going to be where the background color is as well. So you can do linear from left to right, and that's going to mean foreground on the left, background color on the right. Or you can go top to bottom, whatever direction you want. You could also choose bilinear, which I think is going to have foreground color, then background color in the middle, and then foreground color on the far side as well. Um, I think that might look a little better for these kind of text-based gradients. So I'll go ahead and select bilinear. And now we need to choose our start position, the length of the gradient, and our end position. So if we want to go bottom to top, I'll just select somewhere towards the bottom. I'll hold down control to get a constrained angle. So this will make it really easy. So let's left click to set our starting point, hold the button down, and then you drag this to set our end point. So you see, as I pull this line up or down, it's going to affect which parts of the gradient actually show in that text. Uh, because these colors are pretty similar, it's um, not that big of a difference between the top and the bottom. But if you were to look closely here, you should be able to see it's a little bit more green up here and a little bit more blue down here. So that might be too subtle of a gradient for this video since we're doing a tutorial. So let's actually change the background color to something a lot more obvious like a, a purple. So that looks kind of cool there. Um, much more distinctive the difference here. So that would be a bottom to top gradient. And depending on where you set the beginning and end is going to determine how much of which color is going to show inside of the gradient. So 
you'll see that there's kind of a middle area where it kind of blurs together. And then there is the starting area, which has the foreground color and the ending area with the background color. Now, uh, with a bilinear gradient, if we get these lines kind of close to each other, then we're going to have a middle section. And in that middle section is going to be where we have the foreground color. And then on the far ends is going to be the background color. So that's how we can get this kind of look. If you wanted to make sure that you had um, just one color transitioning into the other, that would be when you change it to a linear shape. So kind of looking how it was more before, where you have the starting and ending points, and then you fade in from one color to the other color in between. So either of those can look pretty good. And there's, of course, other shapes as well. So a radial is going to have a center point, and then we stretch this end point out. And depending on how far this line is, you're going to get more of the foreground color and less of the background color. In any case, you get the idea. Let's change back to bilinear. And you can see when you're going left and right bilinear, well, the foreground color is in the middle, the background color is on the edges. Let's angle this back towards the top. And I'm going to hold control down so that we can move this line in 15 degree increments. So if you look at the bottom section, it'll say 90 degrees there with this kind of line. And now we just need to pull these uh, so that we get the right amount of purple and then the right amount of the in-between colors in here. Okay, so the last thing I want to show is how we can just take text like this and also add drop shadow to it. So I'm going to take one of these two text layers, probably the gradient one, and I'm just going to have it selected left click. And then we can go up to filters, light and shadow, and then drop shadow. And then we can get basically a copy of the text shape showing up here in the background. So when I add drop shadow, typically I'll have a very low blur radius so that the background shadow is very visible. I'll increase the opacity for the same reason. Uh, usually 1.0, or I guess you could technically set this higher, but it won't really make a difference. So an opacity of one is fine. And then I'll also bring in the XY offset here. I like having it at around 10 pixels. So that would give you the drop shadow I typically use for like a YouTube thumbnail and that kind of thing. So you can just hit OK when you're happy with the drop shadow. And now we have gradient text with a nice drop shadow, very visible on the background. And you could argue a little bit cooler looking than just having standard white text there in the background. So in any way, that's how you can take text grab the shape from it and fill it up with a gradient inside of GIMP when you want to make gradient text for things like thumbnails or any other purpose. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris and I'll see you in my future video content. So just as a really quick example, you can see in the top right of this thumbnail, the orange and red text is using a linear gradient and then the purple and blue text towards the bottom is an example of a bilinear gradient. So that's just a quick side by side for you.